This is Healthy Souls with Father Nicholas Lowe, helping you to live a Christ-filled life in today's world. Father Nicholas is the pastor of St. John the Divine Greek Orthodox Church in Jacksonville, Florida. Good morning. It's good to see all of you in church this morning. I'm thankful that to see all of you worshiping here. I know that this is, as I've been saying over the last well, now about nine months, um, that we just are hoping and praying that we can all get back together um, together as a family. I cannot tell you, I, I know that you feel the same exact way, how I miss just seeing each other's faces. You know, when you're a family, as we oftentimes talk about in our church, we don't say that we're part of a membership club. This is a church and it's a family. And when the family's not around, you miss each other. And so I miss seeing you all here. I miss those of you that are watching us virtually, not being in this church. But God willing, we're going to get through this, and I can guarantee you that this COVID, this coronavirus, will be a distant memory. I can promise you that because the church always, light always triumphs over darkness. And so just want you all to know that I'm thankful to those of you that are worshiping with us also virtually. Uh, You're part of our family, and we all want you to know that we miss you as well, and we thank you that you're taking time to grow in your walk of faith um, and, we, and that you've chosen St. John the Divine to be a place where you can grow. Just a quick announcement before I share with you this morning's homily, and that is, you know, as we're going through this COVID and coronavirus, I just want to encourage you, sometimes we can kind of uh, sometimes really forget the power of the church in these dark times, in these pandemics, in these difficult times to make a difference in this world. Your financial gifts to our community, just so you know, we have given out thousands and thousands of dollars, your service, your stewardship to this church, to making a difference all over the world. We would not be able to do that had we been not taking appropriate steps to not only save our funds, but also to make sure that y'all were giving what you're giving. And you have been giving from your heart, and I want to thank you for that. That's the message I just want to share with you, is I just want to thank you for your stewardship and if you're, if you're able to give, great. If you're not, and all you can do is pray, then just simply pray. But we just want you to know how grateful we are because you have no idea when we get these thank you cards from people, even in our community, that are unable to pay their bills. Or when we're dealing with people, or even outside of our church, that are just struggling financially, that you've been able to help. So thank you for that. So today I want to continue our sermon series on staying grounded. And the premise behind this entire sermon series is that every one of us will go through a season in our life. And to be quite honest with you, every one of us now are going through a season in our life where the world around us is shaking. And sometimes it can just simply be in your own little inner world when you're in that season. But for many of us right now, the entire world is shaking around us. And some of us, we're probably cold to it now because we've been at it for nine months But just to remind you, if you needed any kind of reminding, is that we're in a world where we're dealing with a pandemic that in this country alone, over 180,000 people have lost their lives to. That we're living in a world right now where there is racial unrest and there is political division. And around this church family, there is this world that is crumbling. And this sermon series is about how do we stay grounded? How do we stay strong in a world that is shaking. And so last week was a talking about how do we stay grounded emotionally. But today I want to share with you a message I hope that will encourage you all about staying grounded in your spiritual bodies. The Bible says that our bodies are instruments. They can be instruments that play great music for God. Where we're reading our Bibles. We're using our eyes to do that. We're, we're listening to messages that encourage us. We're speaking words that lift other people up. We're using our arms to grab a hold of people in our families to give them some encouragement. We are running to help people in need. We can use this instrument to play some amazing music on God's instrument. But in the same way, church family, we have to be honest with ourselves that we can use this instrument For the enemy, where we allow ourselves to see things that we shouldn't be seeing, to say things that we should not be saying, to let ourselves hear things that we should not be hearing, to have the attitude that my passions, my feelings, my desires are leading my life. And what you have to understand, church family, is that when you go through a season 
like we are going through now, when the world around us is shaking, you will naturally yearn to fill that vacuum. You will naturally yearn to try to find stability in your life. And oftentimes, we are using the wrong methods, the wrong instrument to play during these seasons. Let me give you just three ways that you can kind of see yourself and check the box if you find yourself in any of these. These are little ways that you can check yourself to see if my body is playing the wrong instrument. One is addictive behaviors. When you're going through a crisis or a world is shaking, oftentimes we can fall into certain addictions. Now maybe when I say the word addiction, you immediately think that's dealing with someone who's an alcoholic or someone who's struggling with drugs. And yes, that is true. But the word addiction is defined as someone who keeps doing the same thing over and over again and knows that they should not be doing it, but they cannot help it. Has anyone ever found themselves doing the same thing over and over again? They know they can't, they, that they're not supposed to do it, but they can't stop it. Every one of us, I'll say it for you, every one of us would say, yes, I'm Father Nick and I'm an addict. Every one of us could raise up our hands and say, I have a behavior. It's called sin, by the way. It's a behavior that I need to stop doing. It's allowing my body to speak louder in my life than God's voice in my life. Another one besides the addictive behavior is called debauchery. The word debauchery is a word that you see throughout the Bible, and it's referring to our senses. It is when we allow our senses to control us, to be in an extreme way. Uh, let me put it to you in a simpler way. It is, if I feel like it, I'm going to do it. If I want it, I'm going to get it. That's that allowing the body to become the master over our life. In addition to debauchery and addictive behavior, there's also immoral behavior. And those are things that we do, you all know, when we do things that are inappropriate within, the, within and outside of our marriage. These are all things, church family, that I'm going to give you as a, a little compass that all of us, if we're not careful, can allow ourselves to become a slave to our bodily sins. And can I just give you a word of encouragement today? I just want to lift you up today. Is that whatever instrument you play the most in your life, it's going to guide your life. Whatever you play the most in your life, it is leading your life. And why don't we all just come to an agreement right here and right now that we're not going to become a slave to our bodily sins, but we are becoming a son and daughter of an almighty Savior. Could we all just simply say that whatever I'm going to feed the most in my life, it is going to thrive, but whatever I starve, it will die. Let me kind of give you some illustrations in the scriptures. In the book of Romans, St. Paul is so transparent you know, sometimes we look at these saints in our church and we think, gosh, we can never get to where they're at. They're just beyond us. St. Paul had a problem with allowing his body to lead his emotions, to lead his life. The book of Romans is absolutely filled with it. He calls it a battle between the spirit man and the flesh man. Listen to what he says in the book of Romans. We're looking at, for those of you that are tuning in through our virtual website or our app or on Romans chapter 6 verse 4 and then we're going to go from verses 8 to 12. Listen to what he says. That by our baptism we were buried with Christ and we shared in his death. What was his death? The death of sin. In order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by this glorious power so also we might live a new life. In our book, Renewing You, this is one of the verses that really inspired us. It is that you begin a new life, that the old man is behind you, and this new man that's not letting your bodies lead you is in front of us, it's guiding us. So then, since we have died with Christ, we believe that we should also live with him. For we know that Christ has been raised from the dead. He'll never die again. Death Sin will no longer have dominion over you. And so because he died, sin has no power over him. And now he lives his life in fellowship with God. And then he says this, in the same way you too 
You are to think of yourselves as dead to those sins. So far as sin is concerned, but that living in fellowship with God through Jesus Christ, sin can no longer rule your bodies so that you obey the desires of your natural self. It's just kind of warning you. It's like a big warning sign. Be careful who's leading your life, what instrument you are playing. So what are some tools that I can give you today? I want to give you three things that I want you to remember. And church family, let me tell you, I know what I'm talking about today is very sensitive. I get it. But I'm trying to save your life. And some of us here and some of us tuning in need to hear this message. So let me give you three things I want you to remember. Here's number one. Remember that your body is God's house. I've been coming to this church all my life. I love our community. I miss all of you so much. I want to give you a hug. I want to greet all of you. But when you walk through those doors of this church, there's a certain level of respect that you have. You don't need to be told you're already walking in the church. You know you're in God's house. The way you stand, the way you sing, the way you pray, you're in an area, in an environment in which you yourself are connected to God. Don't you know that your body itself is God's church? You too are a cathedral that God stays in, that he dwells in. The Bible says your body is the temple of God. But yet oftentimes we don't think that way. We act ways that we would never act in church. Can I just give you some encouragement, church family? If you wouldn't look at it in this house, then don't look at it in this house. If you wouldn't feed on it in this house, church family, don't be feeding on it in this house. If you wouldn't listen to it in this house, you're not going to listen to it in this house. Because this house is the same as the house that dwells on the inside of you. It is God's house. And I just encourage you, church family, never forget that you are a cathedral where God is resting on the inside of you. Here's number two. I want you to remember that this is God's house, your bodies. To remember that your body is called to honor God. What is the one area of your life that you know if you were standing before Christ, he'd say, that's an area you need to work on. Think about it for a moment. What is the area that God would say, I've been talking to you, I've been speaking to you over and over about this issue. You keep ignoring it, but it's that same issue. What is that for you? Every one of us has what the Bible calls a persistent sin. Every one of us. And oftentimes what we try to do is manage it on our own. But many times, church family, and I've been hearing confessions for years and years, sometimes it's the exact same confession over and over and over again. Why? Because you're trying to manage it on your own. You can't manage your sin. Listen to me. Zoom in a little bit on this one. <laughs> run from it. You got to run from your sin. The Bible says, not my words, again, Paul speaking about this topic. He says, run from your sin, flee from it. And in this way, you honor God. So ask yourself, what is that thing that's dwelling in me that's leading my life that I'm a slave to? And run from it. And then number two, part of that issue is, is find an accountability partner. Find someone that can guide you in that. And for many of us, we're journeying through that all alone. And I would encourage you all, those that are tuning in and those that are here, to go to confession. Confession is not just simply listing a litany of all the wrong things you've done. It's identifying the area that you're struggling in the most. Who are you talking to? Who's truthfully, spiritually guiding you? Again, I know I'm talking about a lot of sensitive things today but I'm trying to save your life. You got to identify that and get some counseling, get some confession, let the grace of God help you. And the third remembrance is this. We remember that 
our bodies are God's house and that we remember that we are called, that our bodies are called to honor God, that we're supposed to run from those sins. And here's number three, is to remember that all of this belongs to God. All of it belongs to God. Sin will always be attractive to you if you've got nothing better in your life. If you're not thinking that there's something better for you to live for. Sin, listen to me, church family, will always be attractive when there's nothing better to look forward to. And I just want to encourage you, St. Paul again says, don't let your bodies be an instrument of the devil, but offer your entire bodies to God. And for many people, and those who may be tuning in, the only spiritual nourishment that we're getting during the week is on a Sunday morning. And for let me just share with you, church family, that for a lot of us, that is staying at the shallow end of the pool. And for many of us, we've been at the shallow end for so long, and God's saying, I've seen you there at that shallow end for a long time. Can you start working towards the deep end of the pool? Can we go a little bit deeper in our walk of faith and offer your entire bodies to God? What does that look like? This week, we begin our Bible studies. This Wednesday, we've got a Bible study that I'm leading myself on the book of Corinthians. Tune in. Every morning when you're getting up, spend time with God. Every day when you're reading the Bible, you're looking at areas that you're trying to grow in. On Wednesdays and Fridays, why don't we fast? Fasting on Wednesdays because that was the day that Jesus was betrayed by Judas. And on Fridays when Jesus Christ hung on the cross for all of us. But I'm just going to purposefully go all in with God. I leave you with this. Yesterday was an historical day in our church. August 29th, 2020, when we elevated those crosses onto the dome and on the bell tower and on the chapel, were extraordinary for us. And there was a moment in that, as they were lifting us up on that crane, that I was looking at that cross that's above the dome. And yes, I was holding on to the metal rail very tightly. But I was looking at that cross, and in the backdrop was the entire landscape of Jacksonville, Florida. And it was an amazing, it was amazing to see that, to see this beautiful gold cross. And as I was up there, I was praying for all of you, asking God to guide us, that that cross would be a light in the darkness. I was thinking about the cross of Christ. It wasn't filled with gold. It was filled with blood. It wasn't pretty. It was stained red. And I was thinking just for a moment about all of us as a church. That here this cross stands above the dome of our church. The highest point in that entire area. And I was thinking that when all of us come to church. When we tell people I am a Christian. That I think God has a conversation with us. I think God says to every one of us, hey, I'm going to make you a deal. I'm going to die for you so that you can live forever. I'm going to go through all of the pain so that you don't have to. But here's the deal. I want you for me. I want that everything that, I, that you do in your life, it's filtered through me. That you would remember, church family, that all of this belongs to him. That you would remember, church family, that your body is God's cathedral in his, in you, inside of you. That you would remember, church family, that you are called to honor God with everything. That's the deal I think Jesus would be saying, I made with you. So let us, church family, as we are beginning... September 1st, which is the new year in the Orthodox Church, that we would stand firm on the ground. I'm not going to be a slave to sin. I know that whatever I feed is going to thrive and whatever I starve is going to die. That I know whatever instrument I play the loudest in my life is going to have control over my life. And that I'm just making a decision today that I'm not going to be a slave to sin. But I am going to be a son and you're going to be a daughter. 
of an almighty Savior. We invite you to join Father Nick and his wife, Dr. Roxanne Lowe, on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month for their Healthy Minds, Healthy Souls call-in show at 8 Eastern, 7 Central on Ancient Faith Talk.